uh, there's something that's not widely embraced, but should be, I think, is you get a kid in a math class and they already have some established interest somewhere else and they'll recite the following phrase. I will never need to know this for the rest of my life. Right. Why am I slogging over it now? And I think that's the wrong outlook because that that ignores what hoops the brain goes through just to solve a problem. It's The statement would be true if learning was, I will learn all the things I need to know to do things I will one day need to do. But that's really not what learning should be, because that ossifies you into whatever was the were the hot topics uh, at the time you were in school. A, a more powerful posture would be having had your brain trained for thought and analysis and processing information. And then, if there's a new thing you've never seen before, you will just attack it with vigor. Attack it in a good way, you know the way. Uh, because it's an unsolved problem. And you can't get enough unsolved problems. When I talk to younger people about this kind of thing, mm -hmm. there's a lot of hope involved. So you're 37, so what's a younger people to you? Uh, people still in college. College. Yeah, because I get email, you know, hundreds and hundreds of emails every day from people who go, mm -hmm. I want a job like yours. You know, what was your career path? And I tell them, you know, seven years of college learning about something I don't do anymore. And they're like, all right, I got to skip all that. But it, it, it becomes very tricky to show people that life after college is one, better in many ways, because you have more freedom over what you want, what you can learn and what you can do with the knowledge. And two, that it's actually worth pursuing, because when you're in the middle of this, this funnel, this siphon, where you have to learn different things that you're not crazy about and apply them in ways that are often mildly torturous, it's tough to convince somebody that you're going to want to do some parts of this for the rest of your life and apply them and use them. Yeah, so, but that's why education has to be not only, here's a, here's a craft, and here's where you're going to apply the craft. It's got to be, how is your brain wired for thought? So that when you confront a problem you've never seen before, you will attack the problem rather than shun it. And so much of learning is the preparation of the mind for just those situations. The fact that you have students in school thinking that what they're learning has to have some direct application, otherwise it's not useful to them, is, that's a tragic state of affairs in the, uh, under the educational umbrella, if that, if that permeates the system. That would mean everyone would just have to be taught a trade. Then you go out and you know, lay the bricks or smelt the steel or whatever, whatever they do in steel. Do they still make steel? Uh, what, yeah, in China. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> that's the right answer to any question. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yes, in China is the right, answer. Right, yeah, yeah, they do it in China. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to see the full episode with Neil deGrasse Tyson, I invite you to click the link in the description. For more awesome interviews with incredibly fascinating people or inside knowledge from the best in influence, persuasion, negotiation, and nonverbal communication, please hit that subscribe button.